I was sitting the other day scrolling through my Instagram trying to find an inspiration for my next design project and at that moment something incredible happened. Figma just released a major feature I was waiting for a long long time. Videos in prototyping. One thing led to another and this is what happened next. Alright, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new, my name is Gal and I make product design tutorials and entertain. In today's video, we're gonna learn all about Figma new feature, videos in prototypes, and we're gonna use Instagram stories and reels for our example. But quickly, before we begin, if you're just someone who wants to learn how to add videos to your prototypes, you'll find it quite easy. All you have to do is create any shape you want, like rectangle, ellipse, polygon, or even star. And it can also work with frames. Go to fill, solid, and all the way down you'll find the new video feature. Click on it, then on choose video, and select the video you want to add to that frame. <laughs> That's it, done. It's that easy, it's just like adding an image. Hit play and boom, you can add videos to your prototypes. But there are a few rules you should keep in mind. Number one, this feature is available for only education, professional and organization accounts. Number two, the video file should be in MP4 format and it cannot exceed 30 megabyte in file size. And finally, it's not currently supported in the Figma mobile app. Good, now that we've got that out of the way, let me show you how we can take this feature to the next level just like you saw in that intro sequence. Okay, real quick, before we dive in, please keep in mind that this is not going to be a step-by-step -step on how I designed this app tutorial. I'm not gonna talk on how I did digital things throughout the UI because that will take an absolute eternity. Rather, this just going to be, you know, walking through my design, showing you guys step-by-step -step on how I designed this prototype in Figma. So what you see on my screen are a few frames. Instagram home screen, stories, reels, and live. And I like to start with this frame, which is Instagram stories. First, let's add a video to the frame. I'll select this rectangle shape I have here, click on fill, change it from solid to video, choose my video and boom, we have our first story video in. Let's click on the prototype tab and make sure this video is autoplayed and loop is enabled. Nice. Now, I want to bring your attention to the animated progress bar up here. Let's start from scratch and recreate it. First, I'll select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle of 110 pixels over 4 pixels. I'll give it a gray color, round the corners all the way, and duplicate it one more time by using the keyboard shortcut Command T. To stay organized, let's give each shape a name. To the top one, I'll name Top, and to the bottom one, I'll name Base. I'll select the base layer and bring its fill opacity all the way down to 16%. So when I add it later to the story frame, it will have a transparent effect to it. Now look, if I select the top layer and drag it aside, we can see what kind of progress bar animation we are going for. I'll select both layers and click on this icon up here to create a component. And let's name this progress bar. If you have no idea what are components, how to use them, and you like to learn more, you can click on this link up here. Now I'm going to select my component and click on the plus icon up here to add a variant to it. And I'll name that variant fill bar. Okay, now I'll click on this plus icon to add one more variant, which I'll name steady. Inside that variant, I'll select the top layer, click on the width properties and change it to 0.001. So now the top gray layer is there, but we can't quite see it because it's so small. And I'm going to do the same to the default variant. I'll select the top shape and change its width value to 0.001. It will all make sense in a moment, but to sum up, I have a progress bar component with three variants, default, fill, and steady. And now for the fun part, let's prototype it. Let's go to the prototype tab, select Select the default variant and drag the plus icon to the second variant, the fill variant. In the interaction details, I set the interaction to after delay of one millisecond, the animation from instant to smart animate, easy in and out of 5000 milliseconds, which is about five seconds. Essentially, I'm going for a five second story. 
Let's hold option on the keyboard and drag an instant default story variant to our story frame. I'll position it and change its width to fill my screen. Select the frame and hit on the play button to preview it. And take a look at that, we have a beautiful five second story. But what if we want to add more than one story? So let's take it to the next level. In my story frame, I'm going to change the progress bar width back to 110 pixels and duplicate it two more times by hitting on Command D. I'll position them next to each other and align them together. Now look, if I click on the play button, we have a problem. All three progress bars are going at the same time and this is not what we want to happen. This is the reason why we created three progress bar variants in the first place, in particular the steady progress bar variant. So I select the second and third bars in my story frame and change them from default variant to steady. And now if we select our frame and preview it, only the first progress bar is going to react. Very cool, let's keep it going and create two more stories frame for our prototype. I'll select the story frame and duplicate it two more times. First, I'll double click on each video shape to change the video. So double click, fill, choose video and select the video I want. Now take a look. In the second story frame, I'm going to select the first progress bar and change it from default to the fill variant. The second progress bar are set to default and the third progress bar are set to the steady variant. And in the third story frame, I'm going to change the first and second progress bar to the fill variant and the last progress bar are set to the default variant. And now we need to create interaction between those three story frames. I'll go to the prototype tab, select the first story frame and drag the plus icon to the second story frame. In the interaction details, I'll change the interaction from on tab to after delay of 5000 milliseconds or five seconds if you will. And that is because it takes five seconds to each story to play. I'll change the animation to smart animate, ease in and out of 300 milliseconds. And let's do the same from the second story frame to the third one. Again, I'll drag the plus icon to the third story frame. In the interaction details, I'll change the interaction from on tab to after delay of 5,000 milliseconds. And as always, Figma helps us by remembering the last animation we created so we can leave these properties as is. Before we click on the play button to preview it, let's create a simple interaction between the Instagram home frame to the story frame. So in a home frame, I select the story avatar right here and drag the plus icon to the first story frame. I leave the interaction on tab, change the animation to dissolve, ease in and out of 300 milliseconds. And also let's do it the other way around. I'll select the close button on each story frame and drag the plus icon to the home frame. And again, we can leave the same interaction properties. My friends, it's time to see our prototype in action. Let's hit on the play button, click on the avatar story and watch our story videos and progress bar in action. Okay. One more example. Let's take a look on how to create this Instagram Reels. So I have this Reels frame right here and if I select it and disable this clip content checkbox, you can actually see I have two more video components right below it. Don't get confused, these are components inside the Reels frame and not two separate frames like the story example. That's why if I enable clip content back, you can't see them. One more great way to see what's going on and what invisible layers or components we have in our frame is to use the keyboard or shortcut command Y. That will show us the outline view. Okay, so if I select the Reels frame and hit on the play button to preview it, you can see that every time I click on the video, it jumps to the next reel. So let's go back to our project, disable clip content to view our video components. Each component has a video placeholder shape, user description, and those three icons. So everything except the bottom menu and the top selection group. I made it this way so when we jump to the next reel, only the content will change change and the menu and top selection group will stay in place. Now let's create the Reels interaction. Let's go to the prototype tab, I'll select the video component and drag the plus icon to the second video component. I'll leave the interaction on tab, but instead of navigating to, I'm going to select scroll to and make sure it's on video too. I set the animation to smart animate, ease in and out back to create that bouncy animation and I'll set the duration to 600 milliseconds. And let's do the same from video 2 to video 3 with the same interaction settings. Before we hit play, I'm going to select the Instagram Reels icon on the home frame and drag the plus icon to the Reels frame. In the interaction, I'll set the interaction to on tab, smart animate, ease in and out back of 300 milliseconds. 
and also the other way around. In the Reels frame, I select the home icon and drag it to the home frame with the same interaction property. And now if we hit the play button, I'll click on the Reels icon. I can see the first Reel, click on it to move on to the next one and again. Before you go, let's check out the full prototype one more time. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this prototyping breakdown. If you like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you follow my design work on Instagram at galby.design. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.